Praise the Lord and welcome to Deeper Life this Thursday that the Lord has, has made. It is a beautiful day. Um, I thought the people who were in this room were going to clap and say, oh, no, 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 no. Welcome, 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 welcome. Uh, I'm, I'm going to pick it up from uh, where we left off on Tuesday. We were talking about fasting and we said a lot of things about fasting. But uh, today I want us to talk about prayer that produces results. And we are going to know how do we pray prayers that actually produce results. Amen. Amen. And so it's good that you would join us kindly. Take a moment and share this live with at least as many people as you can. Your family members, your friends. Share with at least, I told you five on Tuesday. I want to dare you. Share with six people today. Just add one more person to that list and share, 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 share. Again, confirm whether you've subscribed to this channel and you can like the video and just give us that thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Um, if you've done it in, on the video, you can do it in the chat as well. Just put a thumbs up in the chat as we continue. And I believe that we are going to be blessed today. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will use me now as your vessel. As I speak and as I pontificate your word, I pray, let it come out with so much simplicity and so much power that it will cause us, oh God, to be masters and to know how to pray prayers that actually produce results. And so we dedicate this service to your hands. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And amen. everybody say it. Amen. Amen and amen. Now we were talking about fasting and we were breaking down the myths for fasting. And in this season, as we are in the beginning of the year, it is a wonderful time for us to be able to just be in the presence of God, to take time to fast, to take time to pray, to take time to seek the, uh, the face of the Lord, to just know his will for us in this season that God has made for us. And so today I want us to talk about prayer that actually produce results. Hallelujah. And with that, I want us to go to the book of Mark, uh, the book of Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. The book of Mark should be right after Genesis, right? Mark chapter 11. It's Genesis, Mark, then Exodus. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, I'll read from verse 22. And the Bible says, So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God, for assuredly I say to you, Whosoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Hallelujah. Yeah. Verse 24, he says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you have received them, and you will have them. Amen. Yeah. Whatever thing you desire, whatever thing you desire, Hallelujah. When you pray, believe and it will, you will have them. So he says that it is whatever thing you desire. He gives us a chain. Jesus gives us a chain of producing results. He says that first it's desire, but desire without prayer does not produce anything. So once you have that desire, there is something else that follows that desire, which is when you pray. It is not enough for you to desire a thing if you've not prayed about it. Hallelujah. But it says, when you pray, do what? Believe. And then you will receive. And then eventually you will have. It is the chain of results that is produced. So he says, whatever thing you desire in your heart, when you pray, believe when you are praying, then you will receive when you are praying, and then eventually you will have the manifestation of what it is that you are praying for. It is the chain. Hallelujah. It's not enough for a thing to stay in the state of desire. It must move from desire to become prayer. Hallelujah. Then let's read James chapter 5 verse 13 and 16, which is my main scripture. I just want to read it first. James chapter 5, verse 13, I'll read. It says, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. If, uh, let, let, me, let me just change this to NIV, I think. It's easier to understand. All right. It says, 
Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing a song of praise. Then verse 16. Therefore, uh, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Then he says, the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Amen. Amen. Let me find another translation so we can read it. That verse 16. It says, the second part, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That is in King James. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So he says here in uh, New King James, is anyone suffering among you? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. All right. But then he says, uh, it says in part B of verse 16, the effective and fervent prayer of a righteous man does what? Availeth much. It produces results. Hallelujah. Amen. Prayer is an essential aspect of manifesting Bible faith. If you are a believer, there is nothing that you can be able to manifest without prayer being a part of it. But that prayer is a part of it, it does not mean that prayer is the only thing in Bible, in biblical faith that produces results. There are other things that we do that are not prayer that produce results when it comes to faith. But when prayer is not the door, prayer becomes the key. Alright? When it is not the key, it becomes the hand that is holding the key. So in everything that you do, the prayer is then involved. Scripture says that in all things, through prayer and supplication, make your requests be known unto God. In everything, in all things, not, not in some, in all things, make your prayers be made known to God. Okay. Now, prayer has several assignments that are designed for prayer. These are not the only ones, but this, these are not the only reasons why we pray, but these are the assignments for why prayer comes. Amen. Therefore, number one, Number one, we pray. Prayer is essentially, most people don't know this, but prayer is primarily for your growth and transformation. Prayer is essential. Its work is to get you to come to a point of growth and transformation. This is found in Luke chapter 9 verse 29 when we read about Jesus. The Bible says that when he came from the place of prayer, his face was glistening. It was shining. It was bright. What was happening? He was transformed in the place of prayer. So when we pray, prayer has the work, the assignment of pushing us to growth and transformation. Praise God. Praise God. And, and, and we used to, we, sometimes we, uh, I, I, we used to say this. I don't remember where, but we, we used to say that when you pray, you don't change the will of God. But prayer changes you. To acclimatize to the will of God. So in reality, the work of prayer is not to move the hand of God or to swing the hand of God. But prayer is to swing you through transformation so that you can be able to morph into the will of God. Prayer is important for your growth and your transformation. Hallelujah. Amen. And then number two, we pray. The assignment of prayer number two is to make requests. And to obtain promises. Praise God. Amen. I just quoted Philippians 4, 6. Um, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, in all things, do what? Make your requests be known unto God. We don't make our requests known unto God through complaining. He hates a murmuring tongue. Hallelujah. We do not make our requests through singing. That has another assignment. It's for praise and for worship. But when it comes to making requests and obtaining the promises that God has given unto us, the channel, the tool that is given that has the power to produce this result in your life is prayer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then number three is to make decrees and establish spiritual realities. When we pray, we are not only growing and we are not only transforming. We are not only making requests and obtaining promises. We are also making decrees and establishing spiritual realities. Praise God. Amen. Job chapter 22, verse 28, the Bible says that you shall decree a thing and it shall be done for you. 
part of the reason why we go to prayer is we go to prayer to make declarations. It is not what you think, it is what you say, what you declare. And scripture says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, not know so. Mm. Not assume so, not think so, but let the redeemed of the Lord do what? Say so. So when we get into prayer, this is where we make decrees and declarations. And what follows our decrees and, and, and declarations is manifestations. I told you during the crossover service that the primary use for language was not communication, it was creation. So what you speak is very important because the first assignment of everything you speak is to create. Hallelujah. Amen. The first assignment of everything you speak is to do what? Is to create. So you become careful with what you create because whatever you decree, it shall be done. So he says, let the redeemed of the Lord do what? Say so. Let the healed of the Lord say so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. It, is, it, it comes from, it is a place where we go and make declarations, the place of prayer. I decree and declare that I am highly favored. That declaration in the spirit forms the, 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 the patterns that follow the manifestation of that favor. When you wake up in the morning and you go to your place of work and you encounter favor, you know where it originated from. It came from a declaration. Hallelujah. Number four, assignment of prayer is warfare and intercession. Hallelujah. Warfare and intercession warfare and an intercession john 10 10 scripture says that the devil does not come but to steal to kill and to destroy but i came that you may do what that you may have life so we already know this then peter first uh, chapter 5 verse 8 the bible tells us to be vigilant for the devil is a roaring lion moving around looking for a person that he can devour that tells us that we must always be alert spiritually and remember that everything, the, the, the scripture says that through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. That what was seen, what is seen was made out of what is not seen. The unseen world is what creates the seen world. When you get into prayer, prayer is a vehicle that ushers you into the spirit place, the unseen world, so that you can be able to correct injustices, make declarations, and create things in that spirit realm that will eventually manifest in the physical realm. Hallelujah. And so for this sake, we must always be vigilant. And we must always be sober for the devil is a rolling lion that is moving around looking for such that he may devour. Now let's read chapter, Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30. I'm still just laying the foundation. Ezekiel chapter 22. Verse 30. It says... Uh, let me read from verse 29. The people of the land have used oppression, committed robbery, and mistreated the poor and the needy, and they wrongfully oppressed the stranger. Listen to verse 30. So I sought for among among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. I sought a man who would come to seek me. Understand when he says, make a wall and stand before it, the children of Israel pray in front of the wall. It is a tradition. It is a place of prayer for them. So he says that a person who would make the wall and stand in the gap, but I found none. That nation, the, the nation is being destroyed because God looked for a man to pray, but he could not find someone. Oh, can it be said about Kenya that when God was looking for a man, God found you? standing in the gap to pray so we understand that prayer is also for warfare and what intercession hallelujah Amen. very important for warfare and intercession always standing in the gap and and warfare i think in kenya our mentality is that warfare is a nigerian thing but could it be the reason why they are producing more results than us is because they know and they understood understand that we are constantly in a state of warfare warfare is not something that you do once and then you keep quiet no you continue in that place of warfare 
standing in the gap because the bible says that when you wear the full armor of god what is the purpose of this armor is so that you are able to stand yeah. above it all that you are able to do what to stand so you are standing in the gap you stand in the gap for your family you stand in the gap for your government you stand in the gap for your nation you stand in the gap for your church you stand in the gap for your pastor you stand in the gap for your children this is constantly in a place of warfare prayer is the place where you can be able to stand in the gap and contend with that which contends with you it's an assignment of prayer hallelujah praise the name of the living god Now, when we read James chapter 5 verse 16, it highlights the kind of prayer that when you pray, it produces results and produces what? Power. And he says that this prayer is twofold. It's the fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. He puts it as effectual and fervent, but we fervent, but we can reverse it so that we start with uh, fervent and uh, we start with fervent and then we'll talk about effectual prayer. Hallelujah. Fervent, the word fervent means is it means that you do it from the heart with with zeal and truthfulness. Hallelujah. It's another word that we use in Rain City, we call it hunger. Passion. Praise the name of the living God. These this things is, is how you look at people. And there are people who look at others and say, must you pray the way you are praying like that? Must you look like you are about to die when you're praying, when you're in your place of, of prayer? This, this is what we refer to as fervency, is that it is passion that can be seen. You are doing it from your heart. You're not just doing it haphazardly. You're not doing it just as a by the way. But it portrays a level of seriousness and commitment to what you are doing. He says the prayer that produces results, number one, it is what? It is fervent. Fervency. Fervency. Hallelujah. Amen. Jeremiah 29, 13. Jeremiah 29, 13. Let me read it for you. Thank you, oh my father. Jeremiah 29 verse 13. He says, And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with what? With all your heart. You will seek me and you will find me. Not when you search for me in any other form, but when you search for me with all your heart. When passion becomes involved. That's why in our core values we say that our pursuit is passion. Hallelujah. Because we are doing it with all our hearts. We are going all in. We are not doing it as a by the way. No, we are doing it with passion. You can tell the difference between a person who is preaching with eloquence of speech or with practice and you can tell the difference between a person who is preaching with passion. You can be in the presence of two singers. One is singing out of skill and another one is singing out of passion. And even you know which one you will choose. Because there's something that passion produces in the heart of a man. And if it can touch you, imagine what it does to God when a man or a generation pursues him with all their hearts. And my prayer for us in 2024 is that as Rain City Chapel, we will pursue God with all our hearts. That God will see the fervency in our prayer, the fervency in our worship, the fervency in our preaching, the fervency in our evangelism, the fervency in our pursuit for the things of God. The fervent prayer has to be fervent there has to be a level of seriousness that is seen with how you are praying when you are praying oh la karema lo kai praise the name of the living god second chronicles chapter 15 second chronicles chapter 15 from verse 12 I'll read verse 12 and 15. And the Bible says, Then they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. This is talking about fervency. Then what happened in verse 15? And all of Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with all their soul, and he was found by them. 
and the Lord gave them rest all around. What was the key that provoked God to give them rest? That they sought him with all their hearts. Fervency. Hallelujah. Amen. Fervency, 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 fervency. It even says about God that when he was at the temple, he says that the zeal of the house of God had consumed him. This is fervent. This is the reason why God hates lukewarmness. Choose one. Either you're cold or you're, you're hot. I, I don't like people who are hazard. Do you know that God will suspend protocol simply because of a person's pursuit for him with zeal, yeah. fervency, with yeah. zeal, yeah. even in error. Yeah. God would suspend protocols just because a person sought him with zeal and passion. The woman with the issue of blood just got a healing because of what? Because of her fervency. If I may just touch the hem of his garment, if I may but touch, if I may by touch, if I may by touch, then Jesus eventually says, Will I now leave this children, this child of Abraham to remain? Say, no, he sat there and he stood there to listen to all his stories. What about Bartimaeus? Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He's he's out of time. But yet, because of zeal and passion, he's able to get results. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. And what about Cain? Who God said to him, if you did right, would you not be blessed? Because it is not most about what you're offering, but even how you're offering it. Could it be that God is looking for people who are going to be fervent, Amen. zealous, passionate in their pursuit of him? Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Then the second part, it says effectual. 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 This is the first one. It says effectual and fervent prayer of a righteous man. But effectual is so necessary. Ooh. It says effectual means to use or to engage in a way that avoids loss and waste of time and energy. All right, and when we talk about fervency in prayer, I think in, in Africa generally we have we have the fervent the fervent prayer on check. That one we have it on lock. That one you don't have to fight about. When you remember where you come from, <laughs> fervency has to be an element of your prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. But when it comes to the question of effectual, yeah. effectual with avoiding wastage, avoiding loss of time and loss of energy. That, I, I think we need to delve deep into that. Hallelujah. Amen. And the question is, what makes prayer effectual? Amen. What makes prayer effectual? Mm, effectual. Effective. Effectual. What makes prayer effectual? The answer is the degree to which that prayer is aligned to the will of God. Hallelujah. Amen. That is what makes prayer what? Effectual. Effectual. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. How much of your prayer is aligned to the will of God? How much of it? Yes, I know you are praying fervently. But what you are praying, is it in the will of God? Hmm. Praise God. Amen. And now, 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 most people will say, and we were taught, we were taught that when you pray, you have to pray according to the word of God. But just because it is written does not mean that it is your word. It is Benny Hinn who went to um, a woman who was sick in the hospital and this woman believed. She was a woman of God and she believed. She said that by his stripes I am healed and she was on her deathbed about to die. And then she said, I believe that, that, that I am going to be healed because scripture says that by his stripes we were healed. And then Benny Hinn asked her, a question she asked her who told you because yes you read that was the written word of god but was it rema unless it becomes a rema to you it cannot have power in your life just because a word is written it does not mean it is the will of god concerning you 
when the devil went to tempt Jesus, he said to him, if you are the son of God, turn this stone and, and into bread. When Jesus responded with, it is written, every follow-up question that came from the devil was a quote from scripture. But just because he was quoting scripture, it did not mean that that was the will of God for Jesus at that point in time. Sure. Hallelujah. Amen. For he said to him that, that, that jump and angels will catch you. Yes, that is a scripture. They will not allow your foot to be dashed against a stone. He's quoting the Psalms. Yes, it's written. But is it the will of God for me? Not everything that is written is what is written of you that will be in the will of God that carries power. When Jesus was in the temple, he read the book of Isaiah. The scripture says that he, he opened the book of Isaiah and there he found what was written concerning him. Yeah. Are you following, guys? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So you have to know that this is prayer. Now, now let's, let's read uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. First John chapter 5, 14 and 15. The Bible says, Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything, not any howly, but according to his will. Are you seeing that? According to his will, he will hear us, and if we know that he hears whatever we ask, we know that he will have, we will have, we, that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. So it's not about everything that we ask. It's what you ask that is in his will. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Yes, I know you're praying. You're saying, God, I need a house. Is it in the will of God? I need a husband. Is it in the will of God? I don't know if I'm talking to somebody yeah. here. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. The effective prayer is the one that is consistent with the will of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, how do you pray in the will of God? How do you pray, pray in the will of God? How do you pray the will of God? It's important. How do you pray the will of God? How do you pray the will of God? Because you must understand that the will of God is what governs the world. Is what it is what controls the power of God. The, the purpose of the power of God is to maintain or enforce the will of God. So the reason why God will heal the sick is because sickness is inconsistent with his will. So therefore the power of God is engaged to heal the sick because it is consistent with, with his will. When Jesus was teaching us how to pray, he said what? Pray this. Say that thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because the kingdom of God is governed by the will of God. That's how the system of, of God works. So you want to see the power of God demonstrated. Find what is in his will. Mm. So when you're praying for the, for the sick, for instance, you don't need to pray and ask God, Father, is this your will? Already you know it is the will of God. So you can just stretch your hand and pray for the sick. My God, hallelujah. Amen. This is the purpose of the power of God, is to enforce and to maintain the will of God. Because so I want you to understand that God has given us his nature, but there are certain things that he has not shared with man. Mm -hmm. He say that we, ye are, don't you know that ye are gods? Yes, ye are gods. Mm -hmm. But you don't have everything that God, God has reserved certain characteristics that are unique to only him. And these are the characteristics that make him God. Number one is he has not shared with man his omnipresence. That is something that is only true to him. He has not shared with anyone his omnipotence. And he has not shared with anyone his omniscience. These are the things that make God God. They do not allow. So for us, it is in, within our, uh, or should I say, it, it is within our, our desire or within our best interest for us to pursue the will of God, seeing that he has control, full power and full control. The power of God is, is, is not measured. It is not governed. 
Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Apostle Selman says that God does not have authority mm-hmm. because authority is given. Oh, Hallelujah. Amen. For you to have authority, it means that someone gave that authority to you. Mm-hmm. When Jesus says all authority is given, to, was given to me, he was saying that as a man. Yeah. Meaning that it is given, but God does not have authority. Because there is no one higher than him to give him authority. He is God all by himself. He sits in a class outside himself. Demons have power, but they don't have authority. The difference between us and demons is that we have both authority and power. Hallelujah. Because authority is what gives the legitimacy to power. So if we can cast out a demon because they are demonstrating power, but illegitimately because they don't have authority. He says that a soldier can have a gun and a thief can have a gun. Both of them have power, but only the soldier has authority. So he will shoot a person and he will not go to prison. But a thief will shoot a person and he will go to prison. Why? Because he exercised power outside of authority. We too must understand that we have authority and we have what? Power. But that authority and that power is given. Authority is given by God. That's why it says all authority comes from God. Even leaders. That's why it tells you obey the leaders because the authority they have is something that has been derived. It's something that has been given to them by God. Hallelujah. So how do we pray the will of God? Number one is by praying scriptural based prayers. Praying scriptural based prayers. Mm. Hallelujah. Scriptural based prayers. This means that you must know your scripture. Because within the experience, within the exercise of you praying according to scripture, you will eventually pray the will of God. Mm. Praise God. You're praying according to what is? written. When I mention Bartimaeus, he says to Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. What is he praying according to? He is not praying according to Jesus, the one who was born out of, the one that everyone knew. He is referring to him according to what is written. The son of David is calling a dimension of him that invokes a covenant. He says, yes, I have a covenant with David, therefore I can have mercy on you. Are you seeing that now? Oh, the woman with the issue of blood is is saying, if I may just but touch the hem of his garment, the talit, the end of his garment, if I may just but touch it, I will be made well. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. He says, this woman being a daughter of Abraham, what has she invoked? She has invoked a covenant. I am a daughter of Abraham. There is what is written says that I will establish an everlasting covenant with you. Your seed shall produce. They shall fill the earth. Therefore, this woman having this condition is inconsistent with the promises that I have given to Abraham, praying according to the will of God. You must know scripture for you to pray. Don't just go into prayer and say, Father, you know you are good. You love me. Therefore, you're you're going to make me succeed based on what? Based on what? Are, are you understanding? Yes. Be, be, because most of us, you know you're just merciful and I'm in big problems. Please, Lord, just help me. And God is looking for a word that is going to cause him to be moved. Wow, wow, wow. Because he is touched by the feeling of our infirmity. This is compassion. But he is moved by his word. Wow, hmm. when, when his word is invoked, then he is, it, is, it becomes necessary for him to move. He cannot move outside the parameters of his word. So for him to find functionality, a word must go fast so that he can be able to find expression. Oh, If God, being God, could not cast out sin from man, because scripture says that blood has to be shed for there to be remission of sin. Are you seeing that even God had to send his only begotten son to be submitted under the authority of the word? He is moved by the word to send his son to die to fulfill the word. Because yes, I am touched that you are in sin. But I cannot just open my mouth and and cast out sin. No, I cannot do that. Because there is a word that I have spoken and I am moved. I am bound by the words that I say. So when God has compassion on you, what he will give you is a word. Oh, 
And when that word is released, God finds expression within the parameters of the word that he has spoken. This is the reason why you should constantly stay in the place where the word of God is being spoken. Because in the presence of a place where the word of God is being spoken over you, God finds expression and functionality and ways to be able to come in to your life and find functionality. My God, are you guys getting this? Are you guys getting this? Are you guys getting this? We are praying according to what? The will of God. Scripture-based prayer. Scripture-based what? Prayer. Yeah. Prayer. Don't just say, I have authority. Where is it? Mm-hmm. The sons of Sceva went to, to cast out demons. And the demons said to them, Jesus we know. And Paul we know. Who are you? You're telling us to come out based on what? Mm-hmm. I, I wish they had scripture to back up their actions. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yes. Don't just say, I know somewhere in the Bible it must be written. Find it. Search the scriptures to find what is written concerning that. So when you're praying, you know what you are praying and you have authority. It says, present your strong cause to the Lord. A strong case. When you are presenting a strong case, most of you are learned and you've done this. It says you've done uh, group presentations. And whenever you're going to present your matter, you have strong arguments. And you say point number one, point number two, based on this authority, based on this authority. Why can't we have the same effectiveness when it comes to our prayer life? That according to what scripture says, uh, according to this verse, according to this chapter, according to what, uh, this is what I have read, this is what is written. Therefore, this must follow what the word has said. Present your strong, hallelujah, arguments to the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you getting that? Praying according to the will of God. This is powerful. Let's read the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15. Chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. I'll read read it. It says, Therefore, he says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Then it says, verse 15, listen. See that you walk circumspectly, not as fool, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. He says, see that you walk circumspectly. Circumspectly means accurately. You get it? Yes. In, in, in high school. Right? Sit perpendicular. It means circumspectly, correctly. Are, we, are you understanding this? Yes. Not as fools, but as what? As wise. Doing what? How do we then walk circumspectly? How do we walk uprightly? How do we walk not as fools, but as wise? He says, redeeming the time. So he says, time is a very important factor in the life of a man. That you need to walk accurately before God so that you do not waste what? Time. How do you waste time? Because he says, because the days are evil. Then verse 17. Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what? The will of the Lord. He says, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Are you getting So, Paul, in trying to teach us how to redeem time and not to waste time, how to walk accurately before the Lord, he says, is by us finding out and knowing what is the will of God concerning our lives. So that you do not waste time pursuing things and following things that are not within the will of God for your life. So that you find for seven years you've been in graphic design when in reality God is, was calling you, his will for you was for you to be in praise and worship. So now you have to go back and then move again. Mm-hmm. Are you hearing this? Yes. So, 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 so for seven years you spend your time doing ministry in the village when God is calling you to the city. This is why through his mercy and his grace, he has created institutions or things like, 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 like speed and things like redemption. Because he knew that somehow people were not going to believe him when he's calling them to walk according to the will of God. 
So therefore, for the sake of the souls that are tied to you fulfilling his will, he will give you things like speed and things like redemption, just so that you can redeem time. But he says that do not be fools who waste time. Do not be fools who waste time. But do what? Discern. Know what the will of God is so that you move, you walk according to the will of God concerning your life. Hey, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Time that you spend outside the will of God is time wasted. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. 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 So how do you pray? Effective prayers is number one, praying according to what? To scripture. What is written? Praying according to what is written. Now, I want you to know that what is written is higher than I saw. What is written is higher than I had. What is written is higher than I dreamt. Whatever you dreamt, as long as it does not resonate with it, it is written. You can overturn whatever it is you dreamt just because of what is written. So someone comes and tells you, I dreamt that you died. What does it, what, what do you respond? It is written that I will live and I shall not die. It is good that you dreamt, but the authority that is higher than your dream is what is written concerning my life. That's why it is written is so important that no other word will come to you that will become a word spoken over you without you knowing what is written concerning you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Jesus. Amen. Then second is praying in the spirit. The second way to pray the will of God is to do what? To pray, pray in the spirit. Yes. Let's read Romans chapter 8 verse 26 to 27. Romans chapter 8, 26 to 27. It's okay. Um, I'll read, but let's go ahead and first give. Then I'll come back and read it for you. Are you being blessed? I hope you are being blessed from wherever you're watching us from. I invite you to take this opportunity to like the video, to subscribe to this channel, um, and also to just give to the Lord, whatever it is that he has allowed you to have today and to bring to the house of God. Just go ahead and do that. And after you give, I am going to come back and explain this last topic. Let's go. I just want to wait on you, Lord. I just want to wait on you, Lord. I don't want to leave presence jesus until i have an overflow so i'm gonna wait on you lord i just wanna
in you I find my way So Lord I'm gonna wait on you Lord I just wanna wait on you Lord No matter how long, no matter where I'm gonna wait I just wanna wait on you Lord So I will Died just for me So I say, oh Jesus, how I love you If you have a testimony, join me Say, oh, oh how I love Jesus If you know him to be true, say Oh, how I love Jesus The only one who was nailed for me Yes, 
sadaya donai ni wewe Welcome back. Welcome back. Let me pray for you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for what your children have given today. I pray that you will replenish them, that you will multiply them, that they will never lack, that abundance will be their portion to the glory and honor of your name. I pray let increase locate them now in Jesus' mighty name. I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Romans chapter 8 verse 26, the Bible says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. Other scripture says infirmity, not referring to sickness, but referring to the limitations that we have by the virtue of being humans. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercessions for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Verse 27, now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercessions for the saints according to what? The will of God. So when you are praying in spirit, because the spirit knows the heart of the father, you will find yourself praying according to the will of God. So either when you are praying according to scripture, and when you are praying uh, uh, by the spirit, you're allowing the spirit to pray, praying in the spirit, you will be praying according to what? To the will of God. For the spirit of God searches the deep things, the heart, and it searches the mind. It knows the mind of the father. And so he is able to be able to search the mind of the father and cause you to pray what his will is. Amen. Oh, Amen. Now, are you understanding this? Yes. Are you understanding this now? Because of our limitations as human beings, because we don't have the nature of God to be omnipresent, to be omnipotent, and to be omniscient, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God, enjoys that liberty and enjoys that kind of power. So whenever you are praying in spirit, you are praying in the omniscience of God. You are praying in the omnipotence of God. You are praying in the omnipresence of God. Every time that you feel you're limited in your prayer, when you are praying according to the Word, there is another option. There is, there is a higher dimension that you can step into which is to pray according to the spirit of god which causes you to pray according to the will of god eventually the will of god is what supersedes every other thing that you do it doesn't matter how long of how many hours you pray as long as you are praying outside the will of god before you pray find out first what the will of god is and when you pray pray until you know what the will of god concerning that matter that you are praying for is And when you pray in the spirit, he reveals to you what the will of God is. Praise God. This then now nullifies the notion of uh, setting a a set time for us to pray. It is good for us to set time and say, I'm going to pray for three hours. It is good in that it will give you spiritual discipline. But when, when, when it comes to the question of effectiveness and results being produced, it is not the longevity of the hours you pray. It is the degree to which the will of God is revealed in your life when you pray. Praise God. That degree which God is revealed in your life when you pray, that is what causes your prayer to be effective. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are praying concerning according to the will of God. What, What is written? What you need to find is what is written. And what you need to search in prayer is for the will of God until the will of God is revealed. Is, is, you, you see, a, a woman cannot go to the hospital and say that I am, I am going to give birth. And then they, they tell the doctors, you know that I am going to be there for 30 minutes, then I'm out. No, she doesn't go to the hospital and say, I'm going to the hospital for two hours, then I'll be done. No. Yeah. She says, I'm going to the hospital until I deliver. The child is the end goal. It is not the longevity of the hours you stay in prayer. Yeah. It is the degree to which the will of God is revealed in your life when you're praying. So if it takes 21 days for the will of God to be revealed, if it takes 30 days for the will of God to be revealed, if it takes one hour for the will of God to reveal, if it takes 10 minutes for the will of God to be revealed, that's there. That's how long I'm going to be in that place. Hallelujah. So that you do not walk so far but walk in error. (laughs) Can you imagine starting... To fulfill the will of, will of God in your 40s or your 50s. Simply because for the half of your life, you are walking in the wrong direction. Defying the will of the Father. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. So how do you pray prayers that produce power? Number one, you pray the prayers according to the will of God. 
Number two, you pray uh, according to the word of God. What is the written? Number two, you pray in the spirit. Even when you do not understand it, the spirit has omniscience. Mm. He causes you to pray according to the will of the Father. Now, as you take time to pray in this January, as you spend time to pray, I pray that you will pray what the will of God is. Amen. A prophetic word is released that 2024 is going to be a dark year. That is good, generally speaking. But when we come to now talking about me individually, I know what the word of God says concerning me. It can be dark. Darkness can be all around. But there is what is written concerning my life. And this is what influences how I pray. Oh, hallelujah. Now, someone say 2024 is going to be a difficult year for you, maybe for me. I know that this is the day that the Lord has made. And if it is the day that the Lord has made, it's also the year that the Lord has made. And God did not make this day in conjunction with the devil. They did not sit down to make the day together. Even the devil was waiting for God to make the day so that he can be able to be in the day. And when I go back to Genesis, it is written that everything that he made, he saw that it was good. So because God made this day, because God made this year, it is going to be a good day it is going to be a good year because the lord made it why it is written it is written what is written concerning me i shall live and i shall not die it doesn't matter what the doctor's report is when they are present that doctor's report i have another report that is greater than your report ah this report is it is written this is the argument that this is how jesus defeated the devil in the wilderness He did not respond by many words. He responded by, it is written. For whatever situation that you are in, have you found what is written concerning it? Mm. Before you pray and remorseful and and, and, and cry and beg and and roll around and do all those things, all those things are good when it comes to the question of fervency. But fervency does not produce results without effectualness. Hallelujah. Without efficiency, without being the effectual prayer of prayer of a righteous man. Are you getting that now? Yeah. Are you getting that now? Yeah. It is not just about zeal. It is also about accuracy. The alignment of your prayer to the will of God. Amen. He delights in the prosperity of his servants. That is my word. Father, prosper me. Why? Why should I prosper you? Because it is written, you delight in the prosperity of your servants. If my life says that I am your servant, if I am serving you, then it, it, is, it is written concerning me that you delight in my prosperity. Amen. That's how you argue. You don't just say, Lord, I want you to bless me. To, to, uh, for what? Why? How? Why should I do that for you? Praise God. Amen. Have you found out what the will of God is concerning your life. My prayer for you is that you will know with accuracy. You will begin to pray prayers that produce results. You pray these prayers by understanding, by decreeing, by making all those declarations, by getting into warfare, by proclaiming the promises that God has given, by being transformed even in the place of prayer. But this is done by you praying according to scripture and according to the spirit how the Spirit leads you, and praying the will of the Father. Thank you so much for watching. Please share this video on Instagram. Let's do this. Share this video on Instagram stories and tag Rain City Chapel. Tag myself. You can tag Prophetess as well. And when you do that, in our next Deeper Life, we are going to give you a shout out. We are going to mention you, the people who are going to, to share this. I am going to personally mention one of you for the people who are going to share. So go ahead and share this video as many times as you can. God bless you. If you do not have a church that you fellowship at, I invite you to join us at Rain City Chapel. We are in KICC, uh, Abadea Hall, and we meet every Sunday from 10 a.m. all the way to 4 p.m. So God bless you and see you in Zion. God bless. Amen. Amen.